What's up, team? What's up, my baby? What's up, my love? <laughs> I said that. Genuine cat, man. I mean, and when he said it, it was from the heart. I mean, ain't nothing fake about Steve, ever. Then I get a call from Steve, you know, about Shari Vare, present day, three years ago. And the first word to him is, yo, what's up, team? I got something I'm doing. And I said, well, you know, what is it? He said, well, you know, I'm going to do Sharvari again. He said, but I'm, I'm really just having to cook out. And, and the one thing that was, that, that stuck out in the first year of Sharvari, the return, was Sharvari was going to be fun with family and friends. And that's exactly what it was. That first year, three years ago, it was fun with family and friends. And it's so funny because I got a picture that he took. And I, I, I actually got it on my phone. And I saved it. It's actually one of my screens. It was a picture of me and my baby boy. And I don't know if you can see this. Zoom in, it was me and the kid. And he took this picture. And that's exactly what Steve was about. It was about that love. It wasn't nothing. It wasn't nothing. No type of anger with him. He said it, he meant it, and what? It was nothing fake. It was all love. It was all team. It was all I love that dude. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. We used to do these Friday night things at his house. Right back in the neighborhood, we would get together and we would play music. Mario, you was there. Al, Delano would stop by. We would have a real good time. It wasn't nothing but love in there. Always. And, uh, these last few days have hit me really hard because I'm really going to miss my friend. Right? I take solace in the fact that I saw Steve probably about two weeks ago. He sat in the car and had a real good conversation. And uh, I had a chance to tell my man that I love him. And I got a chance to hear him say that to me. And that means more to me than all the records we ever played, you know, all the parts we ever done. I can't even find the words to explain the loss that I don't feel. I mean, Steve was, he was a hell of a guy. So I could, I'm sure everybody's said everything that needs to be said, so I'm going to cut it short. I just had to come together and just look around the room, see all these familiar faces, because tomorrow's not promised. So that's it. I'm just going to keep it short. I love you, Steve. I'll miss you. We all will miss you. It's been great. The last time I talked to him, I'm going to close by on a good note by saying something we laughed about because it was always joy with Steve. We, we, you know, it was a great day. This recently, we recently lost a great artist, Prince, and me and him were joking because when Prince passed, everybody called me like, hey, do you need a hug? Do you, are you going to commit suicide? And, uh, you know, I guess they connect me with this Prince thing. I've never been uh, Dress, you know, but I mean, it's a compliment. Hey, I, I love it. It's, hey, it's done me well. Believe me, it's helped me too. But I told him, I said, Steve, everybody calling me like, you know, you gonna jump off the roof or something. We laughed so hard. We almost had, I mean, we almost fell out just from laughing. And that was just like maybe four or five days after Prince passed. So we're closing and saying that we laughed so hard, and that was my last thing. And, and seeing Steve and laughing, and the, and the only thing I can say to this point, at this, at this point in my life, I thought about him after that maybe, and, and remembered that laugh, and thought about him, and didn't pick up the phone and tell him I love him.
So it's important that you share you love life. You love life now and, and, and get the roses now. Because God picks all the best roses for his garden. So he's taking one of the best and he, he picks the best. So. I was the favorite DJ in the 80s. That's what you said. <laughs> Steve made me feel. <laughs> He'll say, "We take, we take, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, cause she gonna edit. Keep right. going, okay. keep going. Don't, don't feel no kind of way. Just look at me, talk to me, talk to me. Right. Right. Don't feel no kind of way." What do you say to me? Steve O. I, I need five. I need five. Come on. Five. You can have it. Give me five. Give me five. <clears throat> I had all this. I had all this. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> come on. 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 Come better come with two things, a thick skin and a thesaurus. Because you know Steve going to drop a $10 word on your butt that you better know what he's talking about. Sometimes it's a $7.5 word, but he put it out there like a $10 word, and he's going to shoot straight from the hip, which is one thing I always loved about him is he's going to tell you straight from the hip. And if you was a strong brother, you could accept that and like that. And to watch Steve grow from his early days to help him build to what Sharvari is really going to end up being. He might not have seen it already reach his full fruition, but I think he did see it. You know what I mean? Like he saw what it's going to be and he was essential for it to happen. So for me, he's up there watching. I'm glad that he put in motion something that's going to be enduring because all of us are here on earth for a reason and one of those reasons is hopefully to create something that's enduring and that's what I always remember about Steve. Thank you. Thank you very much. I've been knowing Steve over 30 years and uh, I can say hey I was in the beginning when he met you so the three of us used to hang out in her it, you know and, just been always a stand-up guy, you know, uh, my mother loved him. I went out of town, he took my mother shopping and stuff for me, looked out for her while I was gone, he was just that kind of guy, you know. I know the whole family, me, Mo, everybody, just, you know, Michelle, you know, Mr. and Ms. Dunbar, they always been, you know, like fam, you know. And Steve's always there when you need him, and man, you know, just, just talk to him, you know. Wow, it's just, uh... He always said that I was his oldest friend because, um, you know, Mo was in uh, Cub Scout with me, and so I knew um, Steve when he was a little bit younger, so maybe I am. I know I got at least 40 years with this man, and uh, it's a difficult time, but I do have a lot of memories of him. I think everybody here thinks that his best friend, because that's how he made all of us feel. And I feel no different than that. Um, you know, just looking at you guys here, I know that's how y'all feel about Steve, because that's, he could give you that kind of love. And uh, he always told me, you know, when we left each other, you know, like, boy, to death do his part, you know. And, and, and for this to be going on in, in this scenario right now is overwhelming for me in certain kind of ways. And, uh, Growing up with these, these three, you know, it's very difficult right now. And uh, I just want to let all you guys know I do love you all. And let's let that be like that. And uh, as he was saying, team, I love you all, man. And that's all I got to say. That's it. That's it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. My first encounter with Mr. Steve Dunbar was uh, through attending Luomo. Wow. Sorry, Barry. Years ago. So, yeah, years ago, maybe. So we're talking maybe between.
between the years of 81 and 82. Okay. I didn't meet him right off the bat, but I knew, you know, I was good friends with people that knew him. Okay. Uh, I would always speak, okay. give him mad respect on what he was doing right. because right. It, it was a connection. Right. For sure, out of you know, I, I I gravitated towards his sound more so than uh, than other jocks that and DJs that were doing their thing around that time. Right. You know, the, the the music that he played and the way he played it, you know, it it, it resonated. It resonated. Right. I like that word. <laughs> it resonated. Yes, indeed. So okay. Uh, I, if I say, where do I begin? For me, it'd have to start 40 some odd years ago. And like, St like uh, Grant said, I never expected, I never expected in my lifetime to be talking about his demise or his life. Because he, he, he lived it. He loved everybody he met, without a question. And he made you feel like you were a special person, a special friend that he always had. No matter what you did, when you fall out, he would check your butt to a point where you're like, you know I, love, I won this. And you, you would say, no, you really didn't, but you give it to him anyway because he was bigger than everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't really want to make too much conflict, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> it, it took me for a whirlwind because someone called me out the blue and said something and I just couldn't fathom what they had said and my life went complete circle real fast and it just told me that my little brother's gone and we don't have many people in our lives who are not your blood that you can truly say that you're going to think about them the rest of your life. And that guy, I'm going to truly think about him and miss him the rest of my life. Peace. My name is Mario Charles Small, a.k.a. Rio. Steve Dunbar is my brother. It's like I knew him before he knew me. High school coming up in the mid 80s, if you had a Dunbar tape, you were on top of the world. Because it wasn't like you could just go and buy a Dunbar tape. And then after we got down to Southern, then that's when we really got really tight. And me and Steve would go out about midnight to the basketball court, just me and him, and played one-on-one, -on -one. and I could never beat him, because he would just back me down, back me down, back me down, and baby Scott Hook right in. And it's like, I can't even believe what's going on right now. It's like, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really hurt. Like, I, I can't, you know, because we have a special relationship. And it's like his, his beautiful wife, Chauncea, I introduced them to each other. <clears throat> and it's like, I'm done. I'm done. I can't even talk to her. Straight up. I can't even talk to her. Oh. To gym class. I used to regret playing dodgeball because he was single my ass against the other ball. You know, look, you know, look again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Even back then, he had. Pop! Oh, you know. So I endured that through junior high school, and we kind of lost contact. Um, Let's fast forward to my senior year at Morford High. Right around, right before Burnley, like Umo used to do all the parties for um, the high schools. You know, this was right before Morford night. You know, I'm at my locker, and Earl McKinney and I are getting ready to leave. And somebody comes up behind me and grabs my back of my 
like this. So I'm like, you know, we this I turn around, and it was Steve Dunbar, you know. Come with me. I said, okay, here we go. I'm about to get it for all the junior high bullying, name calling, and all this, you know. So he took me down to the, the second floor, you know, it's Brandon and Chuck, you know, you all know. The second floor was where the the cool kids were, that main little strip. But Shari Bari had like that one little corner over there. That was it. If you got a locker down there, you know, and, and if you weren't a part of that clique and you went to summer school, you tried to reserve your locker and you wasn't with them, you got kicked off that little edge of the home. You know? <laughs> So, I mean, if you if, if you were not in the in the, the, the mainstream of their mainstream, your ass had to lock down there. Okay? Because this was ours, darling. So he took me down there and he said, um, so uh, you know, I thought he was gonna say, remember you used to pick on me in school? Ah, you know, he did. Um, he was like, I've heard a few of your tapes and I want to start this organization, hardware. And I want you to play some of our parties. And I was like, you know, hey, that's this is a good opportunity. Now I'm in, you know, with the cool click or whatever, you know. And longer story made shorter, um, Steve and I have been intertwined from that day forward. That's when the relationship really took on a new meaning. I found out our families were connected. Um, his brother and sister went to school, my brother and sister, and my sister does. Um, Michelle's hair sometimes, you know. And um, every time I would go over on Parkside, and those are totally different stories over there, um, Mr. Dunbar would always say, you better come over here and let me feed you, you know. She, oh, she always, and Dr. Dunbar would always have some pearls of wisdom, and we sit there and just, you know. And, um, you know, in closing, I just want to say, never be afraid or ashamed to tell people how much they mean to you and how much you love them while they're still here. So when times like this come, you know, it makes it a little easier. You know? yeah. Love you, Steve. Uh, my name is Delano Smith. <coughs> Steve was uh, like a brother to me. Talked to him every day for half my life. And, uh, you know, now this. I have too many stories to you know, tell. It's, I'm sorry, I'm not as entertaining as everyone else. But, uh, it's, a little, it's a bit soon for me to really, you know, elaborate. But uh, I just want to say I love Steve. Uh, like he was my real brother. And uh, rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you, Dunbar. Little bruh. He was a baby out of all of us Shire Bride brothers. And he always, I'm pretty sure he called each and every one of us Big Bruh. Um, my fondest memory, one of them, a funny one, is that we would have these snow days at Mumford. Anytime we had a big snowfall, there was a snow day. So we would eventually end up at one of the brothers' houses. And a lot of times, we would end up on Parkside, you know, with girls in tow. So uh, I remember the times when we would play uh, strip tunk. I know none of our wives want to hear this now, but that was some good times. <laughs> uh, but we had a great time together, uh, partying together, learning the business of being party promoters. Uh, Steve also was a DJ, so you know, bringing his group along, hardware, and eventually moving to Charivari status was a big deal. And let's fast forward to what Charivari has gone to now, and it, it's, 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 I think it's going to, it's not having reached its peak yet. And uh, I just wish Steve was going to be here to see it, but we're going to take this thing to higher heights and whatever I could do to help, you know, along with other guys. Um, Steve will never be forgotten. His legacy will live through what we do with Charlie Steve, we're gonna miss you.
Thank you. Several. I mean, uh, Steve was always little bruh. Every time I saw him, that was his normal greeting. What's up, big bruh? What's up, big bruh? And I think he said that to all of his Charavari, uh, his brothers. I mean, we were all a little bit older, right? And everything we did, Steve was always there, you know, taking notes, planning his, uh, planning his move. Next thing you know, there comes hardware, and Steve is on the map doing his own thing. And not only from a party standpoint, but also from a music standpoint. You know, Steve was a, a very dynamic and powerful man. And uh, despite the short time here, he lived. You know, a lot of people these days, they don't understand how it was or how it was back in the day when we were one big family. We hung out together, we looked out for each other, and it was just a, a good party family atmosphere. So. Uh, Despite the short time here, I know that he, had, he enjoyed himself while he was here. It was good to know him. And, um, you know, I, I, it's still a bit surreal, but I'm very happy to have the opportunity to help mold him to the man that he became. Thank you. Thank you. Steve was a very, very special person. There was always something very unique and different about Steve, even as a little kid. Uh, sometimes we don't know what the differences are until we grow up and we're much older, and those differences manifest themselves into something else, sometimes something beautiful. And uh, later in life, I realized that Steve had a bunch of different gifts. He was just really, really unique. Uh, we always used to compete with different things, technology, uh, the drones and all those kinds of things. I remember a couple of weeks ago, I found a recipe online that required uh, fresh herbs. Uh, Stephen always, always competed um, cooking and grilling. So I said, I'm gonna get them this time. So I went and I made this, uh, these chicken breasts. And I said, Steve, I got a recipe for you. Uh, some of you ain't done, I mean, I've done everything. I said, no, you haven't done this. So I took the herbs over to his house. I said, Steve, I made some chicken breasts and it had uh, fresh cilantro and fresh herbs fresh oregano and I said, you, you gotta have this stuff, man. He said, well, what'd you, what would you get us together at Western Market? He said, oh, he went to a refrigerator and he said, these, here we go again, he won again. <laughs> uh, I love my brother. When I think of Steve Dunbar, there's two words that come to mind, live and love. And he did those things every single day of his life until he was taken home. Uh, there's an emptiness, there's a hole that I'm going to have for the rest of my life that a lot of us are going to have for the rest of our life. And that spot belongs to him. Steve, love you. I'm going to miss you. Keep coming. For me, the, the Dunbar name was, was, when I was coming up, was powerful. Uh, I came out in 83. Uh, Steve was the man on the turntables, uh, along with a couple of other cats. But Steve was always a great guy. He was always up front with you. Wasn't no messing around. He was serious about his business. And uh, for years, after he retired from basically spinning in public, I was the one who always tried to get him to come back out, or come, <laughs> come at it from different angles. I wanted him to, to bring it back out again, you know, show the public. He'd be spinning all the time at the crib. And he invited me over all the time, but uh, he, he was a real upfront, straight up brother. And uh, we had some Atlanta trips we were supposed to make uh, down with my boy Stan Miles. But uh, every time I go, Steve's always going to be with me. Thank you. The main thing with Steve Dunbar is Steve wanted to win all the time. That's all he talked about is winning. Every, when I first met Steve, Steve called me up and Steve wanted to, Steve was part of the Charvara younger crew, Mo was the brother, and Steve wanted to rent all my equipment. I said, well, Steve, that's going to cost you. He said, well, what can I get for $150? <laughs> I said, it's going to get you the same thing everybody gets. So he said, no, I want to win. He said, how much can I get everything? I said, uh... I said, I'll come down there and we'll check it out and we'll decide at the end of the night. So we get down there and we set up all this stuff for Steve. He was doing a party for somebody else. So at the end of the night, Steve had a friend named James Ship. And he told Ship to go get his money.
Steve would never play the last song until he got paid. He wanted to find, he wanted to have his bread, as he called it. He never called it money. All he said, I want my bread in my hand. So he sent ship to get the money. The guys' parties didn't do all that good. And any of you guys in the day, back in the day, you know, the promoter always tell you the same thing. Oh man, the door. We thought, we thought like, you know, and all of you know, many people got socked right in the mouth by uttering them words back in the day. It's a little more civilized now. But a lot of you guys have seen you punch people. So that's fine. You know how Steve is. So James Ship comes back to tell Steve they didn't pay the money. And all you guys know Steve's face, when he's smiling, that go away. That's the problem. <laughs> Steve put a record on the turntable, and we're all standing there looking. It was me, Hassan, a guy named Tim Slater. All you guys know Tim. So we Steve, Steve's at the Park Avenue, he bent the corner around that wall, and he was talking to the guys. Now the guys were a group, there were probably about six of them. So they felt, they felt pretty frisky about not paying him his money, because there were six of them. So Steve said, you're going to get my bread, and you're going to get my bread right now. So Hassan came back to get me and Tim because we were the older guys on the set, so we thought Steve was going to need some help. <laughs> so we've been in the corner, and Steve, I've never seen anything like this. It was like Conan. Steve went to work on these fools. He grabbed, he charged one guy, and he jammed them into a corner, so all of them were rammed in the corner. So he went to work on them one at a time. He said, pop, pop. And the guy's friends are pinned behind them, so one guy goes down, and when that guy goes down, he's pop, pop, pop on the next one. He's like, and me and Tim were like, damn. And then so, so, so Tim said, you want to help this dude? I said, no, oh, man. He was like, he got nothing to do. So Tim, so, so Steve was just folding these guys. These guys were like, oh, bro. So there's a pile of guys there, and the last guy standing there, he said, you got my bread? And that dude was like, he's like, we're not funny. And we were still, we were laughing so hard. And Steve walked right back around that corner, and he finished playing the music like it was nothing. I'm sitting there, and I'm having lunch with, with, with Dr. Dunbar. And I sit there and I talk to him about jazz for like a good portion of the afternoon. And, and he was so, you know, calm and so erudite and so, you know, hip. And I'm like, how in the hell we crazy ass Stephen Moe <laughs> 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 just didn't make no sense to me whatsoever. I'm like, how in the hell did this happen? These people are lovely. They ain't crazy as hell. <laughs> But as crazy as Steve was and all the places I've seen him do, you know, in the old days, you know, just like so many people have said here on the night, uh, he was about love. And, you know, he would say those words, you know, my love, and we thought that was funny, you know. Yes, and we he, did. He would say, my love, my love, and that fam. was, you know, the fam, my yeah. love, my love, team, love, team. love, team. love, team. love, team. love team. All those, all those, all those team. Steve and team. 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 No pretense with Steve. There was no bullshit with Steve. Okay. Steve was always for real. Yeah. You know, oh, and and when he, and, you know he, he he always said I like to be around smart people. You know he didn't suffer fools gladly. You know, and it was good to be in a society whether it was just plant, whether, whether it was plotting and scheming something like Sheriff Harvey Detroit or eating one of those ridiculous hamburgers he made. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, I, I got a real problem with that, but I'll tell you this. <laughs> I didn't even think it was possible for Steve to die. Some of the stuff that I've seen. Right. Oh, and true. and so when it happened, I mean it really, you know, threw me for a loop. Yeah. And uh I get dogged out for being emotional sometimes, but you know. Sorry. Not us. Sorry. Uh, my memory started off as a, a little one. I was a little guy when uh, all of the parties at the downtown Y started, and I always would peek over the bar trying to figure out what was going on and why everybody had that hype. 
And I remember one day uh, a friend of mine, Christian Hill, uh, uh, brother of Reuben Hill, uh, allowed, Reuben allowed us to go to him to one of those parties. And so uh, my fondest memory is uh, Steve gave us a pass to come on in and check out this new world uh, that we were introduced to known as uh, House. And uh, it's changed my life ever since. And so I knew Steve as a legendary DJ who just put together you know, musical genius and just inspired the crowd. And, uh, and when I heard of his passing uh, and was asked to come down here to say something, I set aside everything I could to actually make that happen. So I'm glad to be a part of this. Thank you. Uh, the loss of Steve uh, is going to affect a lot of us for a good little while to come. I can't say that I knew him as well as the majority of individuals that may come and speak today or, or not. But all I know is the time that I was had knowing him, he was an excellent man. And uh, I hope to think that his uh, story and his spirit will continue to live on in us as well as the souls of the people that he affected. Just keeping it simple and plain. From the heart, that's it. Stephen Dunbar, brother, friend, family. Um, guess what I want to say is, uh, comes to memories, funny things, the good times that we had, uh, not just as lately, but especially the ones when we were young. Um, Steve, uh, I watched Steve uh, evolve and kind of position himself into character uh, in this entertainment field. Uh, it's funny, I remember Steve used to have curfews, the Dunbar parents used to try to keep them in the house. Uh, one day Steve popped up over my house, he had to be like uh, 16, something like that. Uh, just came over on the bike, ready to hang out. Um, had our eyes off shirts on, thought we was cool. Our headbands, eyes off, wristbands, headbands. One Lumo Bowl. Uh, he's ready to go to some parties. He got tired of hearing all them stories. But the funny thing about it, you know, what I found remarkable about Steve, we hanging out. He leave his bike over my mom and dad's house. Like two or three, I'm like, you ready to go back home? You know, you ain't already supposed to be out. He's like, no, nah, man, I'm dead. Just go on. Let's just keep hanging. You know, we hang out to five o'clock in the morning. And if anybody know the Dunbars, uh, they know Mr. Dunbar is pretty strict. Two educated, um, I think professors or whatever, you know, master degrees, whatever, you know, in the family. But Mr. Dunbar used to run like 25 miles or something like that, from what I remember. And we go back to the house and we get his bike, put it in my trunk, taking him home. He's like, man, I had a ball, you know, like, I'm dead. You ain't gonna hear from me for about three or four months, you know. And he just took it on the chin, you know what I mean? He's like, I'm just going, I, but it was worth it. And to me, that was like kind of the start. He's like, I'm determined. And from there, I used to watch him form this thing called hardware. And he had a very smart mind. He put together a uh, same thing as, you know, as, you know, you imagine how Charlie Varden was formed. He did it with hardware, you know, grab guys from, you know, different schools, you know, popular guys, and he put it together. Um, but he was just really determined. But he was also just a great friend. Uh, we had a lot of great laughs. Uh, sit up, talk about things. Um, some things I ain't going to say on here. But, uh, you know, food and stuff, you know, uh, as of lately, you know, just putting it together. But I'm going to really miss Steve. Um, my prayers go out to his family, uh, who I consider my family. Um, it will take Steve to get us all together like this. I'm sure it's going to be enormous, you know, service. Um, but we all come together. Um, I think Steve is about the DJ at the party. But most of the things Steve talked to me about is John Cena and how he's going to take care of her, how he wants to retire, how he wants to go fishing, and what kind of pole he was going to get. But, you know, something about his car. You know, we talked about all, all of y'all behind, behind your backs. We love talking about our friends. 
you know, what Al did. You know, we let the government. Yeah, we did Chuck. We did Chuck. Chuck fast. Long pass. He really hadn't been feeling like that equipment. But he finally set it up. We were talking about the setup. Come over this weekend. I am pulled the tunes. I got some hot tunes. We about to do this. So I was like, bet. And uh, that was the last conversation I had with him. And I'm just, I, I am just, I have a voicemail from him. I have some voicemails on my phone from him. And how everybody was sitting up here saying that he always says, I love you. That's what he said on my voicemail. Yeah. I don't know if y'all can hear it. Thank you.